Hello everyone, my name is Leanne Cho and I'm a registered dietitian for Erie County Department of Senior Services. Welcome to my nutrition video and today I'll be talking about meal prepping for one or two. I thought since we're staying home more than before and probably cook more, it will be helpful to learn some information on meal prepping. You probably have heard about the term meal prepping in the past, but in case you have not, what exactly is meal prepping? It is basically preparing meals ahead of time, could be for a week or sometimes months ahead. It requires meal planning, but you don't have to be a chef to know how to do it. So what are some of the benefits of meal prepping? The biggest one is saving your time. Instead of spending your time every day washing, chopping your ingredients, cooking and cleaning up, now you have meals ready in the fridge or freezer that you can heat up or grab to go. Also, because you have meals readily available, you are more likely to eat on schedule. This especially benefits people with health issues such as diabetes or if you have to take medication with food. Your blood sugar stays consistent when you eat on time. Meal prepping can also reduce risk of malnutrition because you are less likely to skip meals and what you eat tend to be more nutritionally well balanced. It requires effort and thought in what goes into your meals. You know how much salt you put in, you'll notice there's not much greens or no meats in it. You're less likely to buy fast food or junk food impulsively when you're hungry. When you meal prep, you portion the meals out in individual containers so you are less likely to overeat or have leftover. They are the foods you enjoy and you're not going to see yourself picking out green onions, mushrooms, spinach, or anything you dislike. If you have food allergies or food intolerance, you don't have to worry because it is made by you and for you. And last but not least, it can be fun to meal prep. You exercise your brain from planning what to eat. You get light physical activity from doing grocery, standing in the kitchen, prepping foods. So here's an overview of meal prepping steps to make it easier for us to discuss and remember. So there are five steps. First is to decide how much you need to meal prep for. Second is to look for the recipes. Third, create a shopping list. Fourth, plan your prep day. And the last one is to plan your storage. And now I'm going to talk a little bit more about each of the steps. Step one, which is to decide how much you need. So basically you want to think about which meals you want to focus on. Is it breakfast? lunch or at dinner? Do you tend to skip breakfast or feel too tired to cook in the evening? Will you be cooking for you and your partner? You also want to think about how many days you want to meal prep for. It can be for five days, a week, or months ahead. It is also helpful to look at your schedule or calendar to see if it's necessary to meal prep for that many days. Think about holidays, travel plans, or gatherings. Let's say normally you prep for the whole week, but you'll be traveling for that weekend. So maybe you can just prep for three to four days instead. Lastly, you can consider using a planner for meal planning. You can write down what you want to eat for the whole week, and this can help you plan more balanced meals. So for example, by writing it down, you might realize that your menus have too much chicken or too much pasta. Step two is to find recipes. So pick combination of recipes that offer you a variety of food groups, texture, and taste. Even if you don't mind eating chicken every day, you can still change things up by using different cooking methods sauce and seasoning or combining chicken with different vegetables. Having a variety doesn't mean that you need to buy 30 different ingredients. The recipes should meet your preference and fit your budget. Also consider the availability of kitchen tools and appliances and how comfortable you are in using them. 
the use of heavy, sharp, and complicated tools can be a challenge. So if a recipe says to use pressure cooker and you don't have one, you can just look for another recipe instead. Also pick recipes that allow you to use a mix of kitchen appliances. You don't want to just bake all your food when you have a small oven. And this is something that I found on this website, healthline.com. Um, a good rule of thumb is to stick to one oven meal and a maximum of two stove top meals at once. So for example, loaded baked potatoes, a stir fry, and a soup. Then you can simply add meals that don't require cooking to the mix, such as sandwiches or salads. Another tip is to use recipes that you already knew to start with if you are new to meal prepping. So now that you have a bunch of recipes that you want to make, you can then make a shopping list. You can write them down and organize the list by department if you want to go extra step to save time. You can also use apps if you have a smartphone. Um, Wegmans, for example, has its own app that you can make a list of and it tells you the price and which aisle you can find them. They also offer digital coupons on some of the items too. Um, buy bulk and use coupons to save money. And next thing is pick a day to shop, preferably separate from prep day so that it won't be too overwhelming to try to finish everything all in one day. Lastly, stick to the plan, stick to your list. It's easy to pass by the frozen section and buy microwavable meals and end up not doing your meal prepping. Step four, plan your prep day. For example, maybe you like to shop on Saturday and prep on Sunday or shop on Thursday and prep on Saturday. Um, go through all your recipes and the instructions uh, pay attention to cooking time and what needs to be done ahead of time. So for example, soup, stew, and oven meals take longer time to cook, so you may want to start with those first, or if you need to marinate chicken for several hours first. And if you have two recipes that ask for a diced onion, do it all at once. Also consider the time needed to thaw frozen items. Step five and the last step is to plan storage. Consider proper temperature for cooking, chilling, reheating, and the duration of storage for food safety reason. Cook at the right temperature. Meats, for example, should be cooked until they reach at least 165 as this kills most bacteria. Make sure that your fridge is kept at 40 degrees or below and your freezer is at zero degrees or below. Cool foods quickly. Always refrigerate fresh foods and meals within two hours of purchase or cooking. To thaw your food safely, you can thaw in the fridge ahead of time under cold running water or a microwave. You can also just cook it while it's still frozen, although that will prolong your cooking time. Reheat foods to 165 degree and only for once. The more times you cool and reheat food, the higher risk of food poisoning. Remember to label and date your containers so that you can consume foods within safe period. Also eat foods within the right time period. Um, refrigerated meals should be consumed within three to four days and frozen meals within three to six months. You also need to pick the right container that suits your needs. And here are some recommendations. One is to use airtight container, washable, reusable silicone baggies like the picture on top. They kind of look like Ziploc bag, but you can reuse them. You can also use stainless steel containers for keeping ingredients crisp and fresh. Next are the BPA-free microwavable containers. BPA is an industrial chemical that is not good for you. Some of the plastics that have recycling numbers 3, 6, or 7 may have BPA in it. So check your containers and look for the ones that have BPA-free label. Pyrex glassware rubber-made containers are some good options. 
Third option is the freezer safe containers. These will limit freezer burns and nutrient loss. That will be like mason jars. And when you use it, you have to leave at least one inch of headspace so that food can expand as it freezes. Fourth recommendation is the leak proof compartmentalized containers. These are great for lunches and to separate different types of ingredients. Also, one tip is to buy the stackable or similar shaped containers that will help to optimize the space in your fridge, freezer, or lunch bag. Last but not least, just want to clarify there's no need to buy all these containers. Um, maybe just start with the basic one and as you meal prep more, you'll know what kind that you prefer. I added a little section on special consideration for older adults who are watching this video. Sometimes as much as you want to make meals, it can be more challenging to do so now. Maybe there are underlying causes such as loneliness, depression, appetite loss, mobility issue, whether it is physical or a lack of transportation, health concerns, food insecurity, and many others. If any of these are a barrier to you, maybe you'll have to make some adjustment to meal prepping or get some help and resources first. Here are some things you can try. If you have appetite loss, try to have five to six smaller frequent meals throughout the day rather than just three big meals. When you meal prep, maybe not fill up the whole container and consider meal prep some healthy snacks such as milkshakes or cut up celery and hummus. If you have health concerns such as diabetes, focus more on lower carb meals. If you have high blood pressure, use less salt or try things like Mrs. Dash. In fact, it is better that you meal prep because you know what goes into your food. Some people might have chewing or swallowing difficulty. You can chop, blend, grate, and use food processors so that it is fine enough to eat. Steaming your food makes it softer as well. It is also common to have sensory change with your taste, smell, and vision. Here are some suggestions on improving the appeal of food. Try adding flavor to foods with things like lemon juice, seasoning such as ground pepper, curry powder, fresh or dried herbs such as basil, cilantro, or as mentioned, salt substitute seasoning like Mrs. Dash. Avoid cooking vegetables until they are mushy. Try roasting, sauteing fresh vegetables until they are just slightly soft and toss it with olive oil and garlic. You can also add variety to meals by choosing foods with different textures and colors. For example, eat brightly colored vegetables. Plus, the more colorful, the better because you get the different types of antioxidants. For texture, for example, you can top oatmeal with chopped nuts and dried cranberries. You can add sunflower seeds, chickpeas, and crisp vegetables to salads. Also, buy produce that is in season for our best flavor and sweetness. For example, berries in summer, apples in fall, citrus in winter. And here's some interesting facts. Cold food may taste better than hot food. So try yogurt, pudding, and gelatin dessert. And if food tastes metallic, it could be the silverware you're using. You can try the ones made with bamboo, wood, and plastic. Sometimes dry mouth can affect your taste bud, so stay hydrated. Water is always great, but you can also have tea, juice, sparkling water, or infused water with some lemon, cucumber, or herbs in it. Just a reminder, it is important to update your doctor about what's going on with your health if there is change in sensory or trouble eating. Again, we want to take care of the underlying cause if there is any. Your doctor can refer you to a specialist. Maybe you need to see a dentist or the ENT doctor. Also, if you need assistance such as transportation, home delivered meals, food pantries, you can always contact us at um, Erie County New York Connects at 
8526. So before I end my video, I just want to share with you a meal prep recipe that you can easily make. Um, I got this from a website called chocolatecoveredkb.com and I listed the website on here. Um, if you find yourself skipping breakfast often, you can make this the night before. Um, it comes with different variations. You don't need too many ingredients and you can just store it in a mason jar. If you're interested to try this, you can just pause the video or, or go on the website. Another website, choosemyplate.gov, is a nutrition website run by USDA and it has recipes you can try. And what I like about it is that on the left, you can narrow down different things like nutrition focus, cooking equipment, and there is dollar sign to tell you if specific recipes are budget friendly. And I'm sure there's tons of free recipe websites and cookbooks you can use. So this is pretty much what I have to share and hopefully this is helpful to you. I hope you get to try meal prepping and enjoy the process of making something you like. If you have any questions and would like to speak with a dietitian over the phone, you can call us at 858-8526. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.